Today, we're going to talk about boosting your bottom line, improving your profit, and basically building a better business. I'm uh, uh, looking forward to working with you today. So today is really my three-hour, three-day workshop in like an hour. So uh, I sent you all a workbook. It's not really only one sheet. It's a bunch of uh, uh, ideas for you. Hopefully, that'll help you um, figure it out. But uh, uh, we've got our steps to boost your bottom line. And um, hopefully, that'll work for you. Okay. Uh, so on page one, it's kind of where we're going to start. And I know a lot of you are busy. You don't have time to work much on your business. Um, stressed out, uh, too much work, can't delegate, you know, just a lot of different things happening. So hopefully today will send you on the right path. And also it's a preview to my to my up, upcoming boot camp in a couple of months, and you're all invited. Um, so we're going to walk through in two or three days, basically all the things we're going to talk about today. So let's get started. All right. Um, so you all know I George Hadley. I started my company in 1977, and here it is, I don't know, 40, 50 years later, whatever it is. I'm getting old and losing my hair, and um, started building industrial and office buildings. But along the way, I, a few years back, I really stopped my construction business and focused on coaching. So right now, today, I coach a lot of contractors one-on-one, -on, -one, on the phone. I go to their office, and I also have some uh, peer groups and some other things. Um, I've got a book out. If you're interested, you can get it on Amazon. Most of you have probably already got it, but uh, it's right there on Amazon. Just go to Amazon. I used to ship it, but cheaper at Amazon. So, so uh, we'll we'll take that. Now I've got somebody here raising their hand. I don't know if that's a question or um, let me see uh, Q and A. I don't see your uh, your hand raised there. Um, so anyway, I'll just keep going here. Uh, let me, let me, okay, I'm going to just keep going. All right, so I've got some uh, ongoing things, uh, some groups, uh, a lot of uh, guys on in the session today, and women are in my peer group, so that's great, and uh, here we go. So let's get started here today, okay? How do we boost your bottom line? And that's a hard question. Do you raise markup? Do you raise your customers or improve your customers? Do you improve your field productivity or you just do a lot of little good things? And, and from my perspective, there's a few things you must do. And there's a whole bunch of things that are small and make a, a, a strategic difference, but not mo monumental. But there's certain things you must do, right? So we look at our future. What's going on here? Um, so right now, the economy is sort of good or bad, depending on what you do. You know, uh, multifamily is still relatively strong. Housing is coming back a little. Industrial is slowing down a little. Uh, Retail is coming back a little. Just depends where you are. Office is up and down, depending on what city you're in. So, you know, it's really hard to, to describe. But the total market's always less than the capacity of all the contractors. So that creates a price crunch in the middle. So how do we make more money against too much competition? That's the question. So as we get started, I, I bought this poster. Uh, actually, I have it framed. It's in my garage. Every time I drive in, I see it. Dog eat dog. I, it's always been dog eat dog. Business is good, but it's still too cheap. Uh, I was uh, back in the 80s and 90s on a $5 million job. I was making a higher markup than contractors are making today on the exact same job. Why? Too much competition and too many customer demands. So let's look at the opportunities. So what's our goal today? Our goal today is what? Maybe it's uh, continue to produce what you're always done. Well, that's probably not why you're here today. Maybe it's uh, uh, stay stuck, keep doing the same thing, hoping things get better. Well, that doesn't work. Maybe it's, uh, yeah, hope things get better, right? And maybe it's uh, hopefully make more money. Yeah, how are we going to do that? Well, you have to make some changes. What do you have to do to make the changes to make more money? You're currently achieving the results you're currently getting based on your current business strategy and people. And what do I have to do to make more money? And when I coach contractors, generally the first step is to invest money to make money. You can't just hope it gets better. You might maybe have to hire somebody. You have to hire, install new software. Maybe you got to take more time to focus on customer development. 
whatever it is, it's not going to happen unless you're willing to invest time and money. So that's the key here. What do I have to do? And then today we're going to focus a little bit on how to boost your bottom line. Sorry, I'm going to. All right. So we got to we got to agree we have to do business a little different and uh, improve. We got to try some new ideas. We can't, you know, we can't keep doing the same things, hoping we get different results. And of course, we got to commit to change. And we want to disrupt how you're currently doing business, change it for the better. Go after new markets, new customers. You know, I have a client I just spoke to who's pretty much doing GC, general contractors. He's a subcontractor for GCs, and he just keep bidding the same guys. But there's a lot more work out there in the military, in public works, in city, in uh, all sorts of other opportunities. Uh, what are we doing? Just keep bidding the same thing and hope to make more money. So we have to do something different, right? All right. So I like to talk about biz builders. Biz builders are people who build businesses. And most of us in the on the session today are business builders. And that's why you're here. You want to grow. You want to improve. You want to make more money. So in order to make that happen, we have to take some risk. We have to disrupt and change, right? So what do I have to do? First of all, I got to have a vision. I got to know where I want to go. And number two, I got to seek higher levels. So I got to scale up and move up. Got to continually grow and disrupt what I'm currently doing. Build capacity to get to the next level. Grow and seek higher margin profits. Well, that's got to be a, a visionary um, focus for me. I've got to continually seek, how can I make higher margin profits? It's not just screaming and yelling more and pushing your people harder. It's doing business different. What do you need to do to make your business grow and profit? Um, and we and we got to try new things. We got to try new strategies. And of course, we got to improve and install new systems and software and technology and in check-ins and checkouts and job startup and closeout and punch list and all sorts of things we have to improve on and install systems to fix them and produce regular consistent results. And the main thing I focus on, most of us can tweak our estimating, tweak our field production a little bit, but the real key is go after different customers. That's where the money is. If you keep doing what you're always doing with the same customers, you're going to get the same results. How do I, you, how do I make more results? I have clients in my peer groups, my mastermind biz groups, and I coach on a regular basis that are making really nice numbers, 10% net profit, pre-tax net profit. And the same guy in a different market doing business differently, bidding work, bidding public work, so too much competition, not only bid, don't negotiate, don't go meet people, are making 3 and 4%. I've got contractors making doing $20 million in sales, making $2 million, and I've got contractors making $100 million, making $2 million. What do you think the difference is? It's their market and it's their customers. So what do I have to do to make more money, right? So let's think about being a builder, a builder of a better business. And so I always like to start with my three three points, how to, how to be successful as a build, business builder or business grower. First of all, I got to know what I want. I got to have a vision focused on what I want. I want to improve my margins three or 4%. Okay, what do I have to do to make three or 4%? Now, 1%, you just squeeze harder with your crews until they all quit. I want to make, I want to get to six or 7% net profit instead of maybe three to four. What do I have? I have to do something major different. So I want you to think about a goal that's higher than what you can achieve by just working harder. So what do you want? What specific targets do you want to hit? And then we build a plan to make it happen, a written plan. You know, you can't get anywhere without a plan. You need a map, a plan, a, a, a checklist to get where you want to go. And then we have to commit to implement the plan and then make progress towards what I want. And, and also make sure you're doing it. So I have a lot of clients that come to me for help. They hire me. We get started. And after one or two sessions, you know, they go misto on me. They go dark. Why? Because it's hard. 
their commitment wasn't strong enough to continue the improvement process. Improvement and change is hard. It takes work. It takes time. It takes money. And you can't keep reverting back to your old ways. It also takes inspiration and leadership to convince your people, your team, your employees, your talent, that we've got to move to the next level. And that involves change. We can't keep doing business the same way. And then the pressure of people not wanting to change attacks the president, the owner, the person who's pushing for the improvement. And so eventually many give up. Many, what percent? I don't know, 25 to, to 75, depending on who you are and what you do. The winners keep going. I've had some people I've been working with for over 10 years, and they are killing it. They are, they are my they're my they're my uh, trophy clients that I share not their results but I share their stories about what they've done. I've got clients who make ten percent net and go in two days a week. How do they do that? They do that by having good systems, good people, and seeking higher margin work. So what are you going to do to get what you want, right? And so here's my ten must dos. Okay, I just start with the ten. I'm going to give you ten things. Now, on page two of the little workbook, uh, I have just a kind of an outline. I don't have it detailed. And I don't have a 20-page handout for a one-hour free webinar. So so just a little little ideas. But in, in a, th this, this slide here, we're not going to cover this, sh this sheet here. We'll do that soon, in a few minutes. But here's some of my must-dos. And in no ran they're in random order, no, no order. You've got to have a business plan with a vision and your core values clearly defined. Defined. Your vision is what you want to achieve over the next one, two, three, five years. A clear plan of your targets and goals, including what you want to change to boost your bottom line. If I need to change how we bid, that needs to be one of my goals on my business plan. My vision is to improve my customer base. My vision is to have no estimating mistakes or missed items. My vision is to finish every job without profit fade on time and on budget and safe. What do I have to do to accomplish that is my plan and my strategy. Number two, hire. You can't grow and do more without less with, with less with the same number of people. You have to hire. You have to commit to hire for today and the future. If you wait until you need somebody, it's too late. By the time you get them there, it's three months. By the time you train them, it's three more months. And by then, you're, you're going backwards. New hires take time. You have to spend a lot of time with new hires, training, implementing, encouraging, motivating, coaching, all those kinds of things. So we also have to delegate. If we hire, we got to let go of some things. You hire somebody to do things, what are you going to let go of? We also have to have a talent development program. We also have to have a, a promotion from within program. Uh, and we have to have clear job descriptions. So it's, there's a lot of things on, the, on just line number two there. That could be a four-day workshop. That could be me coming into your office for a week. That could be you working on that one subject for literally three months, a couple hours a day. So... All these little things take time and you have to invest, invest in the people or the money to hire people to do what you need to do. Number three, know and track your numbers. I can't tell you how many people I work with really don't know their numbers. The last time they looked at their P&L was when they got it, which was three months after the month in closeout. How many of you really know your numbers accrued? Cash, over under billings, retention, payables, receivables, what's your equity, what's your bonding capacity, what's your working capital? Do you have any investments? Why not? What are we going to do about creating investments so that you can someday have something that's worth something instead of a job? We have weekly financial meeting every month. Oh, excuse me, every week. That's important. These are these are must-dos. Number number three, we got to get out and sell. I always did a survey. I always do surveys uh, with my clients. And one of the top things is my role is to go out and see customers. So when I get back to them three or four months later, 
My goal is still to get out because I haven't had the time to do it yet. Well, why don't you have the time to go out and find great customers? It's because you're too busy doing what you shouldn't be doing. You should be hiring people to do what you're doing. And you're one of your top roles, other than leadership and vision and, and a few other things, is to go get higher margin work. And you can't do that sitting in the office, you know, looking at your computer and, and organizing jobs and working with your estimator. It's just not going to happen. So I have to go out as the leader of my company and seek differentiation. I want high margin loyal customers. And I got to implement a bid follow-up program. I got to go see people and bug them till they buy or die, right? Number five, systems. I've got to have written, clear, monitored systems that are enforced without exception. I can't let anybody not follow the systems. Everybody's got to follow the systems. Number six, weekly crew production scorecards. Those are clear pictures of where we are on every job with every crew leader or foreman. If you got your own crews, your foreman needs to know what the budget is and where they are every week. How many hours spent versus actual versus the budget. And then at the end of the job, we provide incentives if we hit the job on time or if we save money. That gets the whole team involved in improving the company. That one item, number six, will improve your field productivity significantly and make you a lot of money. And that's the one that many of my clients procrastinate and hesitate to install the systems because it takes work. Someone has to print out the reports. Someone has to have a meeting with all these foremen. Someone has to, there's a lot to do. But you're mostly in the labor business if you're a self-performed contractor. And that's where it all matters. You've got to sell scorecard production, never go backwards, always go better. And then, of course, your accuracy of your estimates tie right in. So in order to make that happen, number seven, we have to have a weekly job walk. The project manager must walk the job with the superintendent, with the foreman to do what? Look at the money, the budget versus actual every week. They're looking at the percent complete versus the budget versus the actual. They're looking also so you can build a job properly. They're looking at their look ahead schedule. The foreman creates a weekly look ahead schedule and it's reviewed every week during this job walk. And job walks is not in the trailer, it's walking around. We do a weekly punch list and we do a weekly safety inspection report. These are weekly activities. The project manager goes to the job as the manager and manages their team, gets out there and watches them. If you have a general superintendent, some of this can be delegated, but I don't really like that. The PM's the money man or money woman, right? Okay, number eight, when we start the job, we have a turnover meeting. We turn over from estimating and sales to the project team. That's the project manager, the superintendent, and the foreman sit in that meeting with the project administrator, and they review the budget, the subs, the suppliers, the money, the approval process, the change order process, et cetera. And then every month, we do a job cost update report where the Cost to date, estimate cost complete, estimated final cost, uh, subcontracts, suppliers that are ordered, signed, sealed, delivered, submittals approved and not approved, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a regular monthly meeting. All right. And number nine, oops, accurate estimates. That's huge. Um, and, and, and the key is when you finish your job, you go back and make sure how much time and money you spent on each line item. And then we go back and adjust our estimates. Plus, if we miss things, we add it to our estimating template. That is huge. That'll make you a lot of money. And of course, change orders. I just got an email yesterday. What do I do? You got to pay me a change order. I already did the work. Duh. I mean, come on. Contractor 101. Don't do work without a signed change order. Period. Be aggressive. Be nasty. Be, a, be bullish. No, we're not going to proceed. Sorry. And then charge them extra for coming back and all that. Number 10, uh, if you have any direct reports, which most of you do, um, 
you got to meet with them every week, one-on-one, FaceTime, one-on-one, and go through their performance, review their uh, uh, results, uh, what have they done? What have they haven't done on every job? I have to meet with them one-on-one and walk through the list. I w- My job is to keep them on task. So that's, that's over my top 10. Now there's a bunch more, but we'll cover them in a few minutes. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a question here. Let me see if somebody has a question here. Uh, crew production incentive, Johnny. Uh, uh, I've only covered that 15 times in the, in the uh, peer group meetings, but I will do it for you one-on-one when we're done. Let's set a time and do that. But, uh, you know, the crew finishes on time, on budget, labor hours are on track. We give them a bonus. The whole crew gets a bonus. And I like to set aside 2 to 3% of the total labor hours and split it up amongst the foreman and the crew. If we bring it in under budget, we give them 10% of the savings. That's pretty standard that we've covered in our in our group meetings, and that's pretty standard what I see that works. So you have a whole bunch of small jobs, Johnny. So we do it quarterly, all the jobs, everybody who made money. And then if they were on the crew and it lost money, they get nothing. Now, if you, Johnny, I know you're switching your crews up all the time, but it, so it's a, it's a paperwork, uh, a lot of paperwork to figure out who worked on what job, but it's, it's hours. And so you can break it down by trade. If you got a crew of cabinet, cabinet installers, just keep track of the cabinets. Are they on budget or not? And then if they're on budget, give them 2% of the labor hours, the crew. And if they're under budget, you give them 10% of the labor hours saved. And if they're over budget, they get zero. So uh, it encourages your team to be on the same page. Okay, good question. Thank you very much for that. All right, so keep going here. All right, so uh, seven steps to boost your bottom line. Page, page, Page two of the workbook. Number one, we're going to, Come on. Oh, it's up here at the bottom. I'm looking at the top here. Uh, number one, oops, sorry. We got a step one, business plan. We're going to talk about maintaining a, a blueprint, a business plan. Number two, we're going to talk about financial management. We need to have a financial management plan, how to track our numbers. Number three, we have to have a talent development plan. We have to have a plan for hiring, recruiting, maintaining, coaching, and training. Uh, if you don't, you're, you're stuck. Number, number four, uh, we need a program to install systems and monitor and enforce them on a regular basis. Uh, number five, we have to have construction systems. We have to have standards for construction, just like I covered a few minutes ago, a weekly job walk, uh, a pre-job startup meeting, a pre-customer meeting, uh, a weekly punch list. I want the subcontractors, on if I'm a general contractor, to visit the job two weeks before I need them. That makes them see the job and make sure they're going to actually do something. Uh, If you just call them, you're not sure, right? And then next, uh, 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 we got to do the sales and business development. So these aren't in order. These are all steps, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about sales and business development. I could spend four hours just on that. But, um, you know, you got to get out and call on new customers. You got to seek high margin jobs you got to see customers with a high barrier to entry why the higher the barrier the less competition and the higher markup um so you you got to really know your market you can't just keep bidding what you always bid i noticed i'm starting to get my surveys in for my mastermind peer groups uh meetings in a few weeks and you know so a couple of guys you know what what are some strategic things you're going to start doing bid more bid more how about go out and see better customers Bid more. It's just more work. It doesn't mean you're going to get any of them. It's just more bidding on, you know, against too many competitors. That's not sales. That's transactional, you know, hope and pray, right? And lastly, we're going to talk about your role as the leader and manager of your company, whether you're president, owner, general manager, uh, uh, whatever your role is. We're going to talk about that. So hopefully we'll walk you through this in the short time we have. What do we got here? Yeah. 30 or 40 minutes left. So we're going to crank along here. All right. So we look at our business. I've shown you this before. And what's your potential? We look at your potential. You have good people. You're smart. You have you have relatively good work ethics. And in, in, so we have a valve, a valve that shuts us off. So there's sales potential out there. And then what happens is we, we get some and hopefully we make some money and we grow our business. But there's a shutoff valve that hits 
And what is the shutoff valve? The shutoff valve generally is the leader of the company. It might be you. It causes you to leak money, stop growing, and keep your profits at the same level or lower than you really want them. Why are we allowing that to happen? It's some reason you're not willing to do what you need to do to get to the next level and to improve your bottom line. That's the question. So think about what you have to do. There's no magic formula. There's no silver bullet. I used to speak a lot, World of Concrete and other things. And, you know, they're all looking for the magic bullet. Well, there's no magic bullet. The magic bullet is a lot of hard work and a lot of change and a lot of disruption of how you currently do business. And that means you've got to change too. You can't hope your people change. You've got to change how you manage, you lead, you spend your day, you look at your calendar. You know, some of you don't have any investments. Why don't you have any investments? Because you don't, you don't go get any. You don't even look for them. Or you don't make enough money to go make investments. So what are we doing here? We can't just keep hoping we, we some we get we win the lottery, right? We have to do something. So so here's some ideas. Um, what must you do? You maybe you got to hire, train, delegate, let go. Maybe you need to implement and enforce systems. Enforce keyword. Implement stronger word. Maybe you need to have uh, proactive sales versus selling low bids. Proactive sales, marketing, customer development, all those kinds of things. Maybe you better seek better customers and better jobs with less competition or jobs that require tech technical expertise that nobody else can do except for you. I want to become the preferred provider in my market where nobody competes with me. I do it better than anybody. Now, there's still the low ballers that'll buy cheap stuff. Okay, move on. Let's find customers who value what you do because you're the best at what you do. First of all, you have to decide what you want to be the best at. Can't be the best at everything. And 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 then a simple you got to hold people accountable. Well, how do I hold them accountable if number one, they don't know what their job description is, what their deadlines are, what the mandatory requirements, for example, accounting. It's mandatory. We have a job cost uh, scorecard template on every foreman's uh, inbox by by noon on Monday. And on Tuesday, the PM walks a job, period. No excuses. The excuse is if you don't want to do it, you don't work here. Well, you can't find any help. Well, then fine. C continue to run a poor profit business. Not acceptable in my book. What are you going to do to hit your numbers? Okay, so those, you know, just hopefully triggered a couple ideas for you here. All right. So number one, what do you want? This is your business plan, uh, your vision, your blueprint, your strategic plan. What do you want? Uh, how big a boost do you want? Boost your bottom line. What do you want your sales to be? Have you clearly written them down? Do you know what you want? Why are you here? Do you know clearly how much profit you want to make in dollars and percentages? Net, not gross, net. If you want to make 5% net, 7, 10, you want to make 100,000, you want to make a million, you want to make 5 million. What's your net profit goal? If you don't have a goal, it doesn't matter. You just keep working and hopefully it gets better. And well, it doesn't. Uh, and then what must I do? If my goal is to increase my profit margin from 2% to 5%, what do I have to do to achieve my goal? First of all, what do you want? What's your plan? And we keep track, make progress. What must you do to hit your goals and improve? That's really what I want to know. What do I have to do to boost and improve? So that's what I want you to think about moving forward. If you just stopped right now, make a list of what you want. And go make it happen. And that means you got to change things, do things differently, hire a new team, hire, get rid of some slugs, hire some good people. Well, there's no people. Yeah, there's no people if you don't look. There's no team, people if you don't have a hiring plan. There's no people if you don't proactively recruit. If you don't pay top dollar and top benefits, yeah, there's no people. Who wants to work for the same company that they're already at? You've got to give them a reason to want to come to work for you. There's got to be a future. So think about your role and what you can do to make it happen. So 
generally companies go along for a while and then they flatten out. It's one year, three years, five years, and then they kind of stay there forever producing the same results. And eventually some call and join our group or call me and say, hell, what should I do? Well, in order to get to the next level, we have to what? We have to have better results. So this is the gap that I call the owner or leadership gap, the president, owner, general manager's gap. How do we fill the gap? You have to do something different, or you can accept this by the same results by doing business the same, or you can do something different. What are you going to do different to, to fill the gap to get to the next level? I mean, motivational speech here, right? What are you going to do? You want to be here? You're here. There's a gap. What do you got to do, right? So that's the key. So you have to decide what I must, keyword must do and must commit to do. You have to decide. And so it's real simple. You got to decide. Make a decision. Any decision is better than no decision. You're not going to get every decision correct. Some are going to go wrong, but you're generally going to get most right. You've got to make more good decisions than bad. Otherwise, well, that's you're going to do that. Uh, uh, you're either going to do it or you're, or you're not going to do it. Quit. And if you keep postponing decisions, you're not going to do it. Nothing's going to change. So what do you have to do to get to the next level and boost, right? you you got to stop not deciding. Procrastination is the, is the death spiral. And so it's yes or no. So when we have our peer groups, we ask, uh, hey, what are th- what's the f- number one thing you're going to take home and implement when you get back to the office? Well, I haven't really decided yet. Well, what did you waste your time here for? What are you going to do? You're either going to do it or not. It's either yes or no. Should I put an incentive program in? Well, let me analyze it. No, is it yes or no and when? You know it's going to help. Well, no. Yes. Only answers. When you ask your project manager, how's the job going? Pretty good. Are you on t- Are you on schedule? Well, pretty much. That's a no. Are you on budget? Well, sort of. That's a no. Did you get all your change orders approved? Pretty much. No. Let's get black and white here. You're either doing it or you're not. You're either f- you're doing what you need to do or you're not. No exceptions. Okay. So here's how it works. I've already kind of explained it. Say, you, say you're bouncing along doing okay, but you want to improve. You want to boost your bottom line. So you, this is what I call the stuck zone. You've kind of been doing what you've always been doing, and you, you call for help. Help! I need to get to the next level. So you start a program. You start doing something different. You hire me. You hire somebody. You get in a group. You do whatever you do to improvement, right? And, uh, and then it starts working. And then eventually... One day, three days, three months later, you go, whoa, I know some of you are on this call here, been with me, and then only lasted a couple calls, but now you're back. So it's a year or two later, and you go, oh, I guess I need to get back on the on the improvement treadmill. And so reality checks in. Change is hard, so you stop. And then, of course, you go back to your old ways. But if you continue the improvement program with help, with encouragement, with motivation, with a peer group, something, you're going to get your business where you want it to go. Incredible improvement I've seen over the years by working with so many clients. I've had at least, well, I can't even count, 100 to 200 clients. And out of them, I got 50 superstars. They've just killed it. And then I got about another another 50 that are, that are okay. And then I got another 100 that it just reverted back to the old ways and they just gave up. Why is that? I, I don't think it's me. It might be, but I hope not. Right. So what, I mean, I, I, a couple of you are on this call today. Why are you here? Where, what happened to you? I haven't seen you in a year. You paid me and you, you went away. I thanks for the money, <laughs> but my goal is to help you not get rich. I'm not getting rich doing this. This is fun. It's my, it's my passion. And so here we go. Uh, so what do I got to do? I got to you got to com- commit to improve, invest time, and of course, time costs money. And you got to get some help, whether it's me or whoever. You, uh, you got to mentor somebody. You're in a peer group, something or other. You're in a tech group, whatever you're in. Uh, you got to put out the fires. First thing we do is we 
We got to put out the immediate fires. You got to run away from that fire. We got to hire. Almost always, we have to hire right away. You know, you got to hire an assistant. You need another. You need a bookkeeper who can add. You need a a technology person who can spell e. You need project manager who can actually get things done on time. You need a superintendent who doesn't need to be babysitting told what to do all day. What do I have to do to delegate me so I can improve the company? And then I have to have a plan, a business plan and a vision. I call mine the Biz Builder Blueprint. Got my steps to success. My book clearly explains it. You get the template with the book, however you want to do it. You can hire me, whatever you want to do. And then uh, and then we got to build a five-year financial plan and a profit plan. Markup distribution, profit, sales, revenue, growth, uh, uh, margin, markup. What do I have to, how much do I have to bid to achieve my goals at a certain win ratio? All those kinds of things. And then we have to have a clear org chart. Now, these four, five, six, seven are not in a, not in a clear order. They sometimes go in different orders based on your needs. So but we have to have an org chart, clear chain of command, and, and written, clear, enforced job description for every pick position in the company. And then we have to have systems. Now, systems is definitely one of the ones you're going to move to the top in most cases. We have to enforce, we have to maintain, we got to implement, we got to track systems. Without systems, you're running around with your chicken with your head cut off. And number eight, we got to sell. Talked about that for a few minutes now. What do I got to do to seek high margin customers? Can't keep going after the same kind of customers expecting them to get more money. There's no more money with the same customers. They do business the same. We have to find better customers, higher margin customers, customers who value you. And so your solution, so just two minutes of advertising. You can hire me. I do six 90-minute uh, sessions. I have peer groups. After you've been in my sessions, I might invite you to one of my peer groups. And then I'm, I'm doing a boot camp in a few months, if you're interested. Uh, the, the discount ends tomorrow or the next day. So um, jump on it. And if not, uh, it'll be sold out. So let's go. And then lastly, think about how busy are you? Busy, 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 busy. Um, the more you do, the less you make. You can't get rich with your head in the ditch. When you're doing, you're not growing. When you're doing, you're not profiting. The more you do, the less profits you make. Delegate, let go, to grow. So uh, are you too busy working to draft an improvement plan to commit to change and make more money? I mean, you got to do it. You, you got to dedicate an hour a day, two hours a week, whatever it is, Fridays. If you don't dedicate time, you're not gonna, it's not going to happen. You keep, everybody keeps pulling you away. Just block it out in your calendar. If you got a doctor's appointment, you just block it out. You, you tell your client, no, I can't make it. If you got a, a if you got to be in court, you block it out. You just tell your client, I can't make it. If you got to improve your company, you just block it out. You tell your client, sorry, I'm busy at, from two to four every Thursday. I, it's just booked. Sorry. You got to commit. You can't keep making excuses and postponing your future. Okay. So what are we going to do? Number one, number one. We got to implement, update, and maintain a blueprint or a business plan, a written business plan. Now, I could spend the rest of the day just on that. But uh, first of all, we got to have a vision of what you want, where you want to go. When when I'm flying into Las Vegas a few years ago, there's a little plane there. I saw this site and I said that looks like a nice site. I drove over there; it's for sale. I called. We made an offer. We, we went to ask her. I got a plan drawn. My vision is let's do something. I knew what kind of product would work there and uh, made sure my guys were on board. And it was my vision. Let's build this project. I had a loan and all the other stuff you have to do, permits. And here we go. We're starting to build a nice building. And eventually, you know, and, and how do we do it? My vision has to implement, motivate, inspire, mentor, coach the team. There's my team contractor, architect, real estate broker, myself, a few years ago when I still had, uh, I don't know, look, looked a little better. <laughs> and uh, eventually you end up with a bunch of buildings and we sell them and we lease them, right? And it's fantastic. We got a future. But it started with a vision. So what's your vision? What do you want? You know, you're looking out in space, got to make a decision. Where do you want to go? And so step one, determine your vision. 
And if you need help with that, I'd love to help you. Got a whole template. I, I actually on the workbook, the last couple of pages is my it's my personal vision and my business vision worksheet. It's kind of small, but if you need some help, let me know. But there it is. Commit, make it happen. So what do you want your business to become in the next three to five years? That's the question. What do you want? Uh, growth, sales, profit, customers, projects, focus, systems, org structure, talent, estimating how you win work, or results, profits, and investments. What do you want? There's a whole list there on the worksheet there. I don't have time to walk through it, but uh, it's there. Just do it. You know, make yourself an appointment. How about how about tomorrow at three o'clock? Just write that down, block it out, draft your vision. Okay. Let's do that. And then we got to know our core values. What do we stand for? I love Pete Carroll. I know a lot of people don't like Pete Carroll, but I think he's great. He's a motivational, inspirational mentoring coach. He's a positive guy. People love to play for him. And I know he struggled the last few years. You know, they win the, they win the USC. That's where I went. They won the championships. And then they, he goes off to Seattle, wins you know, the Super Bowl. But I just love his energy and his excitement and his passion for the game. And he never gets on the field. He never calls a place. He has great people who do that for him, and he leads them and mentors them. And he's the head, head coach, but he's really the leader. All right? So what are your cultures? Your vision, then your culture, and your principles will become a sieve of how you do business. So if you've got a, somebody with a bad attitude, you have a core value of positive attitude. They have a negative attitude. They're gone. They should not work for you, or you got to – Tell them the truth. Hey, we can't have this kind of attitude here. It's time to improve or go. And I'm going to start looking for your replacement because unless you change, and plus we're going to need somebody anyway. All right, next, what do we need to fix? Start a fix it list. What do I need to fix? What's not working? I encourage you to take a yellow pad or a flip chart, stick it on the back of your door or the wall of your office and everything that goes wrong, write it down. Identify what's not working that I need to fix via a system, a strategy, something I need to improve, a deadline we always miss. What is it? What's not working? So we need to get our team together, look for areas for improvement. Maybe you're going over budget on jobs, your labor's over budget. Maybe your jobs are late. Maybe you have callbacks, rework, punch list. I mean, callbacks, that's so easy to fix. Don't let your crew leave until they walk the job with a customer and make sure they're happy. You know, there's no reason to have a callback ever. We, we, we don't have anybody in step, the, the foreman or the, excuse me, the project manager or the superintendent should walk the job before the crew leaves. And if they're not done, they gotta, they don't go home. They stay or they come back tomorrow and get the job done. No callback. Callbacks is dumb. Rework's dumb. Punch list is dumb. It's because you don't manage your job. Those are easy fixes. Uh, accurate estimates, missed items. We mentioned that earlier. Uh, and we only sell low price. Well, that's a that's a big problem. That's going to take some time. Might take a year to improve and entice and build a better customer database. Um, we need people. Well, we need to start a hiring and recruitment program. We need to sign someone in your company as the hiring coordinator, not the hirer hiring coordinator so we so we can develop a simple plan to hire people on the spot and then check them out and then you know make them work make make it work uh maybe i do too much self myself and i have to make all the decisions well that's no good what shouldn't you be doing and lastly if you have integrated accounting and project management and estimating systems maybe we need new software maybe we're still stuck with uh you know, yellow pad and a pen or Excel spreadsheet or wherever you do, there's nothing wrong with that. But we need to, maybe we want to upgrade as we to, in order to allow us to grow. So what do you need to work on? And then we got to pick our top priorities from those and go for it, right? What's your top priority? Uh, and so, you know, make a list of all the things you need to work on, including your vision and your values. What do we need to do first? Maybe there's a fire or two, and then maybe there's some long term, right? And then lastly, on the on the biz plan, this is huge. You want to get to the next level. You've got to be focused. 
What's your focus, your laser focus? What are you focused on? What, what kind of work do you do that you're better than all other com competitors, that you're selected because of your excellence? You're known as the best. If you're known of you do everything for everybody, big jobs, little jobs, small jobs, retail, shopping centers, office buildings, industrial buildings, manufacturing buildings, multifamily, single houses, custom homes, you're selling price. Well, what are you the best at? Got to get focused on what are you the best on? And then we got to stop doing things for people that are asking us to do things that are not within our sphere, our focus. And then we got to focus our energy on the right customers, the right projects, the the right kind of jobs and focus on our expertise, specialty, niche, service, where I'm the recognized leader, the best provider in the community, in the marketplace. And we got to weed out the losers, the bad customers, the bad jobs. Those are bad. We bid too cheap because we had to get the job. Got to just stop, say no, say no. And, uh, and we got to focus where we get the highest prices for the type of work that we want with customers who will negotiate and trust us and give us lots of work on an ongoing repeat basis. That's what you want. What do you want? What's your focus? So also on the page, I got a little sheet, page two or three, a little sheet on focus. It's a little thing, but you get the idea, right? I read a book called The Pumpkin Plan. That's where I really thought it made me focus on them, on the, um, on your focus, on your focus, right? Okay. Number two, financial management plan, financial and profit plan. Uh, so do you track your numbers? Do you have a regular schedule where you know and track your numbers? Do you have a professional accounting team? Do you have a full charge construction project a bookkeeper, construction bookkeeper who understands uh, accounting and has been trained in accounting and they really understand the needs of a construction business? Do you have financial systems? Do you have software? Do you have checklists? Do you get your reports and, and financials on time on a weekly and monthly basis? Are those scorecards coming out to your crews every week on time? Some of the companies have outgrown their bookkeeping team, but they still need certain things and they're not getting it. So they have to hire another person. I have a couple of clients who've literally hired a full-time job cost scorecard tracking person. And that person goes out and meets with each foreman every week with the project manager. And, you know, this is a company that's got over 100 employees. So it's huge. 100 employees lose one hour. That's, I don't know, I can't do the math in my head. That's got to be five grand, right? Well, it's cheaper than, it's not too expensive to hire somebody to track it, right? If you're going to lose five grand in one, one or two hours a week. So that's huge. So think about what it takes. Um, so maximize and track your sales, your profit your targets, your goals, your equity, your working capital. I had a client yesterday, uh, they're trying to get bonding on a big job and they didn't have a clue how to get it. So we walked them through the working capital, the bonding capacity, the backlog strategy, the completed contract schedule, what else the bonding company looks for. Spent an hour with them on the phone on that. And um, hopefully, I haven't heard today, but hopefully they got their bond. Uh, they, they can definitely handle it. But I, I, I'm a little worried because I know they've distributed all the all the cash out of the company into their personal accounts. So the company's basically breaks even, and it uh, looks like it's broke. But personally, they have a lot of capacity, so hopefully they'll figure that out. Um, cash flow. What are you doing about cash flow? Who's calling the receivables every week? Are you, do you get in a cash flow report? Um, are you updating your job cost every month? And uh, uh, do your results produce enough profit and equity so you can build and develop some investments? If not, you're not successful. If you can't create enough investment cash, your company's not doing what it's built to do. What do you want? I want my company to produce enough money so I can invest and retire or sell someday. That's what you want. That's your personal vision. Well, we got to have the company implement the personal vision via profitability, right? Okay, so what are your targets? So here's a little breakdown here. Number one, what's your annual overhead? I, I, I had a three-hour financial workshop last month. I had a nice turnout. I had over 50 or 60 people at it. And we spent three and a half hours on this. But real quick, what's your overhead? What's your net profit goal percentage? I'll make 5%, 10%. What return on overhead do you want to make? 
40, 50, 60 percent. You even know what that is? You better. Uh, what's your total overhead and profit goal? Then what's your average markup converted to margin? And then, of course, divide that and it gives you your sales required. And then what's your break even sales? If the, if the economy is moving into a recession, what do I have to do to break even at what markup? Better know that, right? And then uh, what's your what's your uh, what's your annual growth percentage? So your overhead's a million, net profit's five hundred thousand. Fifty percent return on overhead is the national average. I have clients making a hundred percent. I have clients making two percent who aren't focused on the right things. So the profit goal is five hundred grand. It's not a percentage. I'm sorry, it should be five hundred grand. Uh, add those together. My goal is to bring in a million five of gross profit. And then my markup's 20%, converts to about a 16.7% margin. I divide million five by 16.7. It tells me I can do 9 million in sales. So now I have a sales plan and a markup plan. And then I know my break even is I got to cover my overhead divided by 16.7, 6 million. You get a 6 million in sales to break even at 16%, 20% markup. And then uh, my annual growth goal is 15%, minimum, minimum. That's not even national average. National average is bigger, especially with inflation at 20% two years in a row. This year, it's around 4%, so 15 is a good number. Two year, If you only grew 10% in the last two year, three years, you're, you're in the toilet. You're backwards. You, got, you went backwards. Okay, so what's next? Uh Manage your construction, labor, burden, crew cost, equipment cost, equipment utilization, return on investment for your equipment, revenue, revenue and profit per project manager, superintendent, and foreman, and estimator. That's key. People always say, how many? How much work should a project manager do? Well, figure it out. What are they doing? Don't ask me. I, I know, but because I do a survey on that, but do you know how much revenue your project manager can handle? How much profit your superintendent makes or foreman? How much revenue they can generally handle? So the good ones make more and the bad ones make less. So the bonuses ought to be based on that, right? Um, your goal for sales versus achieved versus required markup you need or gross profit. Do you keep track of that? You track your sales coming in versus what you need and your gross profit goal versus what you need every month. Uh, are you tracking how many jobs you win versus how many you bid? How many dollars you win versus how many dollars you bid? And um, you know, how many bids and wins do you need per month? You're tracking that on a, a cumulative basis. Cumulative basis. And uh, does your does your superintendent and foreman know the budget? Do they know their budget for hours and equipment hours? They got to. How do you how do you how do you build something on budget if you don't even know what the budget is, right? So these are just basic things. Most of you know this. Um, we track our job markup by, by job size. We know we bid the big jobs cheaper and the smaller jobs uh, uh, at a higher margin to cover for the large jobs cheaper. I've got a couple of clients who bid big, huge jobs, almost the size of their volume, at a super low markup, and they're so busy, they can't go get any work, and now they're going to lose money because they bid – they're doing the same amount of sales at half the markup because they, they bit off all these big jobs and didn't get any little jobs. So there's a whole strategy we need to really focus in on watch. Okay. Uh, we need to do job cost reports. We need to do uh, weekly, uh, monthly job cost reports. We need to have uh, scorecard meetings with our crews. There's budget versus actual. We need to have... Um, a web schedule, work in progress schedule. I could spend an hour just on that. And we need to have a completed contract schedule. So what are you doing that you should be doing in the accounting area? And then of course, lastly, we need a financial plan. This is part of your business plan. Where are you now, where are you gonna go? So if we grow at 15%, our sales are gonna grow, our markups roughly stays the same. What sales do we need? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 million. So every year, we grow, our overhead grows, everything grows. And now if we, if we improve our profitability, we can do less sales. Or we can do the same amount of sales and make more money. Okay. Skip that. 
Okay. Uh, it's almost an hour. I'm going to uh, continue. Um, uh, I've got another 15 minutes. I, I think I promote it as an hour, but I, what I meant was an hour and 15. I, I think I'll be on time. So we're going to, we're going to continue on. If you have to leave, I'm sorry. And uh, this is recorded and you will get a link uh, emailed to you. All right. So thanks for being here. If you have to leave in a few minutes, but let's keep going here. Let's talk about structure, org chart and talent development. So we've got a standard org chart that looks like this, where we've basically got uh, the, one of the goals is investments, build wealth. One of the, one of the, one of the arms, we've got to get work, win work, grow the business. We've got to price work accurately estimated. Then we've got to build it. Now under building there's project management and there's field. So some companies have two boxes there. And then, then we have to have someone in charge of people. This is a new box that I've added to my standard org chart. Someone has to be the people person or the team builder or the recruiting or the talent developer. Um, and she probably should say talent developer. And then we have support. In support, we have admin and accounting. All right, so that's a that's a good start. So every one of those boxes have a whole bunch of lines in it, the words. Each word has to get accomplished for you to run your business properly. There's nothing you can eliminate. Or if you do eliminate, you're got a you're limping along with a flat tire trying to get somewhere. And so, uh, you know, just under talent development, training, coaching, mentoring, reviews, and promotion, you know, that's that's a lot. It's not going to just happen. So you have to decide what you have and what you don't have. Now, we can assign the same person to more than one boxes. The same person can be in a lot of boxes. So, uh, you know, and then we look at where I need help. Where do I need help? Where do I need the most help right now? That's the first thing we have to do is fix that. So I don't know where you need help. You probably need an assistant. You probably need more admin. You probably need some help in accounting. And you probably need some help with either field management or project management. You know, that's generally where people, and, and obviously crews, uh, that's where generally people. So where where's your help button? Where do you need help? So first, I have to identify where I need help. And then I have to figure out a plan, a hiring, recruiting, to talent development plan to go get it. And I have to sign somebody with that task. That doesn't mean they're going to do the interviews. They're just going to run the ads. They're going to recruit. They're going to contact people. They're going to sort the resumes. And they're going to set up interviews for the, for the top people that you pick, right? So the question is on your org chart, what positions are not being done, need to be assigned, hired, or replaced? Uh, what new positions or new people will allow you to boost your bottom line, improve, and grow. And what should you stop doing? What should you stop doing? That's more important than anything. What are you going to stop doing? I'm going to stop supervising crews. I'm going to stop uh, ordering material. I'm going to stop approving change orders. I'm going to stop, uh, you know, any job project managing. I'm going to stop estimating any job under 100000 What are you going to stop doing so you can start meeting with accounting? So you can start making sales calls. So you can start implementing, drafting, creating systems with help from your team. What are you going to stop doing, right? So if we look at our a typical org chart, uh, this is sort of a smaller company. They've got one project manager and one field manager and two or three superintendents and foremen. Maybe they're doing 10 million a year. Generally, the president does all the blue boxes at the top. In the yellow boxes would be an administrative person. They can do office manager, HR, talent development, project administration, estimating coordinator, marketing uh, coordination. Now, that's probably not one person. That could be two people, but you can use them in different boxes. Over on the right is your pink. That's all your accounting tasks. And then the green at the bottom, those are all your field tasks. So we sort of sort things out by, by, by areas of responsibility. And, and we, we need to build an org chart and a chain of command. I, I ask companies when I meet them, they, I ask the superintendent, who do you report to? Well, I'm not really sure. We've got a general superintendent. I got a project manager. And I think I report to the owner. I'm not really sure. And sometimes there's a shop guy. I don't know who he works for. I don't. I need, need some equipment fix. Who do I call? Do I call the owner? Do I call the superintendent? Call a, I, I don't know. You know, and, and uh, you've got a secretary or an administrator over in a 
estimating department. She needs to, she or he needs to take off for a day. Who do they talk to? Well, I don't know. There's no chain of command. So that's the key here. We got to get organized, right? And so under this scenario, to grow your business, you know, if you're a hands-on control owner, president, you know, number one, you got to stop doing the work and you got to delegate. You got to stop doing project management and field management. You got to get out of that 100%. And then you can still help with estimating. You're probably going to be the salesman and the estimator, chief estimator, but not do the estimates. We've got to, we, I got to focus on talent. I got to build capacity so we can move to the next level with better people that can do higher margin work, which is more intense and probably requires more expertise. And I got to hire for the future, not for what I need now which means I have to invest in the future. And of course I have to learn how to delegate and let go. I can't stay in control. If you know, you double your side, you, you're out of control. You can't do it. You're stuck at the level of what you can do. So next your role as president, leader, owner, whatever you are for some of you in the room here is leadership, vision, motivation, inspiration, communication, Positive vibes, moves, you know, Pete Carroll. Sales, generate high margin work. That's your number one task. And that requires you to oversee estimating and get work. Now, if you can't estimate, you don't know anything about numbers, you're a terrible salesperson, then you got to hire somebody to do that. But most successful companies, the owner slash president is the chief get work person, period. And if you're not getting enough high margin work, it's because the owner doesn't go after any high margin work. They don't want to do it. Well, then you need to hire somebody to do it. It's simple. Grow equals time and money. Estimating. If you want to, I don't want you to do the estimating, but I want you to oversee it. Uh, and I've got one client that's over 100 million. They've got a chief estimator, and the owner doesn't really check the bids anymore, but they do stay very close to the estimating department. They have a weekly meeting with them. They go through the big jobs on, you know, before the bid did bid time or proposals, they work on the proposals so they can win the work. And then construction, um, results, you focus on results, not the actions. You focus on, did you achieve the goals? And so that's a regular meeting with your team. And you got to know the numbers. You're the chief financial officer, but you're not the accountant. You got to stay on top and track the numbers. And then, of course, uh, as we start small, grow bigger, we need somebody in accounting is full charge, really good. Number two, we need an assistant. I, I need an assistant who can help me manage the business. That's a huge money saving cost improvement decision that you'll never regret. Well, I don't, know. I don't know. What are they going to do? What are they not going to do? What are you doing? You shouldn't be doing. You shouldn't be doing all those emails. You shouldn't be scheduling meetings. You shouldn't be getting a job cost report from accounting. They can get. They can do all that for you. They can help you call people. They can. I could go on for hours. Um, so that person can also help as an office manager. They can help with uh, uh, marketing and sales and uh, estimating coordination. Or if you're real small, they could project administrator. All those kinds of things. And then, then I really need somebody to take over the construction, project manager, general superintendent for the field, or an estimator. So you decide what you need. So back to help, where do I need help? What do I need to stop doing so I can do what I need to do, want to do? So first thing we want to do is build a flow chart. I've done several of these many companies. We, we got to build a flow chart. How's it, the request for bid comes in. Who decides that we're going to bid it? And it goes to here, to here, to here. When do I review that? We get an award. When are we going to do We do a turnover meeting. Then we do this. and we do that. We award contracts, et cetera, et cetera. And then how do we interact with a customer? And so that'll make you some money. There's, what am I holding up? A $100 bill? I can't really see it. Whatever it is. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a 50. Different head. Different head. There's a 50. Uh, it looks like, uh, I don't know who it is. Anyway, so uh, first thing we need to do under people management, everybody has to know what their expectations are. What's required? What's their deadline? What do we expect? What results do we expect? So whether you're a company, whether you're a football team, there's the Giants and the, uh, who's that over there? I don't, can't read it. Oh, oh the uh, Patriots, it looks like, or it might be the Bills. It wasn't last night's game, 
But uh, everybody's got to know the score. Everybody's got to know their position. On a team, everybody's got to know clearly what they're expected to do every day. And so uh, if you're the head, the new head football coach of USC, he's done pretty well so far. Hopefully it continues. And uh, he makes it clear what's expected, who's running out, what the plays are. We've got a playbook. We train. We train the plays. We mentor. We help. We improve our team, right? So everybody's got to know exactly what's expected. And then, of course, in order to, to develop these job descriptions, we get the team together and we start we get them together. We get all the PMs, the estimators, the superintendents together, come up with the must-dos. What are our must-dos What are, and the deadlines? And so here's a company I worked with in uh, Fed in Michigan, and there's all the um, – on the right side is all the uh, estimating team and the uh, staff team working. On the left there in this is the marketing team. And here we are again. On the left is the project manager team and the superintendent team. You can see even on the top left it says controller. We already did their job description. So we work together to create job descriptions. And we end up with team design job descriptions. And here's some samples, project manager. Here's all the activity that are required and the deadlines. And here's the superintendent. Here's the crew foreman. Uh, those are all clearly defined. And uh, I've got them all drafted out, but you got to tweak them. You got to have your company make them and then check mine to see what else you might want to add. And so uh, next point, we want to develop a management team. I just reading the book right now because it says, who's your number two? You know, who are you going to turn over construction to? You got to develop that person so you can spend your time building a great business. If you're running construction, you can't build a business. You don't have time. You're too much happening out in the field. So we got to have a team, a team design company. And we need, a, I mentioned a talent development program. We got to have a talent development program, which includes hiring, training, motivating, promotion from within, reviews, all those kinds of things. Recruit, hire, build capacity, train, mentor, coach. we got to have a benefit plan that achieves or exceeds the market. You know, look at uh, look at Tampa Bay. They hired the most expensive quarterback at the time to run to come to Tampa Bay, Tom Brady. Well, look, I mean, that was a good investment, right? If they would have kept the old quarterback, they, you never heard about Tampa Bay, right? So they're, unless you live there. <laughs> We got to meet every week. We got to hold them accountable, and we got to delegate and let go. So, and and then enforce the systems. All right. So, what else do we need here? Stop solving other people's problems. All right. So, we have regular meetings. We need to have regular meetings to help the bottom line. Hold people accountable in the meetings. Not just talk about I need a shovel. I'm the meetings are accountability meetings. So we start with a daily meeting with my assistant. Go through what I need by tomorrow. Uh, and then we have a weekly estimating meeting, what's required, what's the deadlines, what are we going to do? And uh, we meet with accounting every week, go through the receivables, payables, job cost, you know, all the things we need to go through, the cash report, uh, you know, who's paid, who hasn't. Uh, Bi-weekly, we need to have uh, an all foreman and superintendent meeting to go through their results. Are they on time? Are they on budget? Are they on schedule? They're safe. They're doing their reports. They're turning in their dailies. They're taking photos. All the things we want to make sure they're doing, change order management, all those things. And then monthly, we want to have a management team, okay? Then quarterly, we want to have all company team meeting. It's a results meeting, an encouragement, and a training meeting. So that's these are mandatory. This is what the best companies do. Oh, I'm too busy. I can't. Okay, fine. Keep struggling. But you've got to invest in your team, right? you got to hold people accountable. And uh, next, systems. McDonald's has systems, right? How to build a hamburger. You know, lettuce, pickles, mustard, whatever it is, right? Two pickles every time. Pretty ugly, huh? So I got to replace myself with systems. I've never met Mr. McDonald sitting in a McDonald's. There's the owner's not even there. Most of these owners own 20 of them. There's somebody running it, right? Just like you, they got somebody running your job. And maybe they check in once a week and go over the reports, right? And so we have to have systems that are written, monitored, enforced. Uh, like a football team, we got to have plays, how we run the plays. So we produce the results that we want every time. And so how do I make sure the concrete's finished right? I got to have a concrete system of how we do expansion joints or dowels or or however you run your business. Um, everybody's got to do it the same way, same results, uh, consistent, right? That's the key here. And so we we draft, we we write, we maintain, enforce, 
systems. We create a systems manual, a do manual. It's our playbook. And uh, in, in it's, it's mandatory. There's no excuses. You all do it or you don't. We all don't. Or we all do. So many companies that go into it, half the team does it and the other half is grumpy about it. And the company that does, it's even more grumpy that the other people don't have to do it. And so we got a mess here. We got a positive attitude disaster. And uh, or you don't work here is the real key. So visual pictures, guidelines, checklists. Uh, so we've got construction systems, uh, project management, field, on budget, on time, quality work, safe. No profit fade, no missed items, accurate estimates, uh, job cost reports every month, scorecards weekly, incentive program, and of course, equipment management program. Got to have all those. So each one of those takes some time. So, you know, there's so many things. This is a lot of work to think about how to improve your bottom line and get organized to make more money. Here's some must-dos that I came up with. Hold, hold the pre-job turnover meeting. It's a must. Customer startup meeting. Go through the agenda. I have an agenda for that. You know, review the change order procedure, the billing procedure, the approval process. How much time do they have to approve our submittals and shop drawings? Uh, follow the contract. What's a, what's a change order markup? What's allowed? What's not allowed by change orders? When do I have to have it in by? If I don't have it in, do I get do I get dinged or do I, will I get paid? Uh, then I week do the weekly job walk with the foreman and superintendent PM every week. Um, we have a pre-job startup meeting with with our, our pre-show up meeting with the subs and a pre-job startup meeting just to make sure they're ready to show up. We do a weekly punch list, weekly look ahead schedule, and we don't do any change orders without authorization. Duh, right? And uh, we don't overtime. You got to get approved. You can't just do it. Two o'clock. It's got to be approved. Otherwise, you know the foremen get a lot of pressure from their crew that they need the money. They don't need the company to make money. They need money for themselves. So we got to put in systems to avoid that temptation or pressure. All right. So last, almost last but not least, a couple more things. Where are we here? We're five more minutes. We'll be there. Sales and business development. Business development, marketing, and sales. Okay. Top reasons contractors don't grow or make higher margins. What do you think it is? There's no sales. There's no estimating plan, written plan. They just bid. They don't know what kind of jobs they want to bid. They just bid based on what they can fit in. And obviously, most of us look hard at the jobs and do we have a chance or whatever, but, you know, those kind of things. Number four, three, there's no plan to build loyal customers. There's no plan to make us different than anybody, no value add. And and we and therefore we stay stuck on the low bid treadmill, hoping and waiting customers call and ask us to bid. You know, we run an ad and hope it, hope it works. We've got an old client, we, we, subcontractor bid a lot of work to a general. We hope the general calls. We don't proactively call them. We wait for them to call. We don't go take them to lunch and thank them. We just hope they call. Uh, we stay on the low bid treadmill, and uh, so we got to implement a plan to seek and win high margin customers and better contracts. No plan, no nothing. Hope is not a plan. Uh, and so we need a proposal strategy. You know, we want customers to always call you first, award you more work, award you jobs at a higher price, be loyal, negotiate, and give you last look. Now, how do we do that? We don't do that by just hoping. We're proactively in their face, going and seeing them, thanking them, delivering donuts, whatever you got to do. You know, you got a client whose who's kid's a soccer geek, take him a messy jersey. You know, figure go online, figure it out, and take, hey, I got this for your son. I hear he likes soccer. So, some of the baseball, beginning with baseball, uh, New York Yankees baseball or signed baseball, whatever. There's things you can do to set yourself apart. And so you can build that loyalty. What are you doing to build loyalty and trust? What are you doing to date your customers so you can get engaged? You're hooked, right? Uh, and so you got to offer more than low price. You got to be proactive, and of course you got to stop stop waiting for the jobs to bid. You got to be proactive. And so choices. Here's your choices. I started with this comment. You can bid more jobs. You can lower your costs. That's hard, but you can do it a little bit out in the field. You can lower your markup. That's easy. If you want to 
basically break even at best. Or what? So there's that's the question for you today. That's the closing question. Or what? What are you going to do to get higher work and boost your bottom line? Hope, wait, do nothing, don't decide. Or are you going to imp improve your profitable sales? You're going to go out and proactively seek, bug, boost, higher sales. With loyal customers, build relationships. Find jobs that are high barrier to entry. The best jobs with my clients are the ones that are hardest to get into. The military jobs, the GSA jobs, the airport jobs, the nuclear power plant construction pieces, the oil refineries, the medical projects, the hospital work, those are hard to get into. Every one of the guys and gals in those businesses make the most money of all my clients. If I had a list of my 100 clients, current and past, 200, that would be in the top 10, 10 to 20% every time. And their profit margin would be double the average every time. Expertise differentiating factors. That's the key. And if you're a jack of all trades, you're a master of no profit. Okay, so stop waiting for the higher margins. It's not going to get any easier. you got to get out of your chair and go do something. Can't just be another plumbing company. you got to be more than that. you got to generate better business. It's like you got to have start over. Forget what you've done. Let's go get what you want. you got to stop waiting for the phone to ring. you got to stop hoping the government has more work. you got to stop looking at plan rooms. They're just all everybody else and their brother can get on those lists. Got to stop hoping your yellow page ad or online works for you. Uh, you got to stop hoping Google works for you. There's me. And, uh, you know, you can't stand on the corner and with a sign, help, I need work. So what we have to do, is we have to sit down and dedicate time, energy, and money to invest in a proactive sales, marketing, and estimating plan. That's the key. What are you going to do to get what you want? So part of my plan Always includes a calendar, a list of activities, a list of your top 20 clients that you're going to go take care of. How often are you going to go take Joe fishing? How often do you go take Sam to a wine tasting? How often do you go take Bill and Sue, couple who own a who you work for, <coughs> to, to the symphony or to the ball game? We got to have a plan of what you're going to do with your customers. We can't just buy tickets and think about it later. What's your plan? And uh, my my best clients uh, are the ones, some of them are right here on the screen here, and they're all 100 million plus clients. And uh, what they do as a president is the key. Every one of them is the sales generator. And their role is simply said, focus on where the highest margin results are. And that's where we're going swimming. That's where we're going hunting. We're not hunting out there in the fields with everybody else. We're going where only I can get to. I provide vision, leadership, motivation, communication, and, and enthusiasm. I make sure we have systems. I make sure we have strategy, and we make sure our org structure is sound and implemented and maintained and upgraded. I focus on talent. I want the best talent that wants to work for us. That's the highest paid. I, one of my clients in uh, northern western U.S. makes a lot of money doing civil work, just basic civil uh, site work. But his foremen all make 100 to 100 and a half each. They're the best. He doesn't mind spending the money on acquiring and keeping and maintaining top talent. And his bottom line is out of control. So good. He's not lowballing and trying to pay 80 grand for a guy who's worth 150. So what are you doing to attract, maintaining, enforcing promotion from within your talent? And of course, we got to sell. We got to grow the business with high margin profits, whether it's customers, revenue, margins, whatever it is. I I wanted to always negotiate work. That was my business model. I seeked seeked out clients who will negotiate. And if they won't, I won't even bid them. It's, it's like, I don't want to bid your job. 
unless there's only two bidders or three bidders, or I think I can get last look. And I think there's a potential for a repeat client. But if there's none of that, I'm just, it's not worth it. If you won't negotiate with me, I'm, I, you know, you're, you're seeking a low bidder. That's not me. I'm the best bidder. And, and the prices are going to be the same within 1%. So who cares, right? So let's, let's decide what we're going to do to boost our bottom line as we close out here. Uh, so commit, keyword commit. What are you going to do? I've just generically walked through a lot of things today, probably way more than you anticipated when you signed up for this. But what are you going to actually do? And if you need some help, give me a call, obviously. Uh, you got you got to have a mentor, whether it's your a, a friend, whether it's another contractor in your community, whether you're in a peer group with another bunch of contractors. You got to have some peer group accountability partners. You got to have somebody pushing you, holding you accountable. Because uh, you're going to start small and you got to grow big. You got to grow the money as big as you can. I mean, you're working hard. You might as well make the most money, right? So we need a plan need a business plan and we got to figure out what I'm going to do different. What are you going to do different to boost your bottom line? That's the key here. All right. So what are you going to start doing and what are you going to stop doing? That's it. Simple. What are you going to start doing? What are you going to stop doing? Okay. Well, hopefully I've given you a few ideas and a few motivational tips and a few things you can work on when we leave the workshop here today. So in conclusion, then I'll open up for questions. Uh, what are we going to do for the future? So I've got a couple of things. I've got a boot camp in Chicago. I know it's a month or two away. My, my early bird special ends this Friday. If you're interested, it's on my website. Just click on webinars and live events and boot camps. The registration is right there. There's a 10-page description of it, of all the things we're going to cover. Basically, we're going to do what we did today, but we're going to actually have to fill out the forms and go leave with a with a blueprint, all right? And then, of course, my next uh, webinar is in a month. You'll see it on my newsletter. Oh, uh, actually, it's in two months. Okay, so what else? Uh, so what's your solution? Uh, if I can help you, I, I set up some sessions. If you want to test me out and you, and you want to just check it out, send me an email. We'll set a time to just have a introductory call, no charge. And then if you're interested, we can move forward. That's up to you. So you got my email, you can attend my boot camp.